begin, I just want to talk a little bit about the tools that we'll be using to buff and polish the clear coat. Let's start off with the actual tool and rotary tool. What we have here is a DA polisher or dual action polisher. And like a rotary tool, it does spin and rotate in a certain direction. But what makes it different than a rotary tool is the fact that this thing also orbits as well. So what that does is prevents burning into clear coats or paints and not leaving swirls in the actual clear coat or the actual surface that you're uh, trying to buff or polish. Uh, these are very affordable, between $40 and $60, depending on the brand. Okay, so that's the tool that we'll be using. As far as the pads that we'll be used today, they're all foam pads. Initially, I was gonna just use two pads, just a polishing pad and a finishing pad, but I reconsidered the whole situation and I figured there's a lot of swirls on there. I might wanna use a compound or a cutting pad. So that's what we we'll use first. Uh, these two are bought from Harbor Freight. They're very affordable between five and seven dollars. So they are different colors to distinguish themselves. This is another uh, pad, foam pad. Uh, this one was from 3M. It's similar color to this one, but because it's a different brand, it's doing a different function. So don't necessarily, in my case, don't look at the colors to distinguish which one is doing what. Each pad has a certain purpose when you're clearing or buffing a car. Uh, let's start with the first one. Uh, we have this foam pad here. In, in this case, it's orange, um, but this is a compound slash cutting pad, and this is used to remove heavy swirl or oxidation on clear coat. Uh, it's very hard and very abrasive, hence the reason why it's was cutting, so to remove all the debris and imperfections in your clear coat. Um, with that said, you do want to combine this with uh, the proper compound. This one is a compound from Meguiar's. Um, many companies make these compounds. Uh, I just happen to have this over a period of time, so I'm using Meguiar's, but there's uh, numerous brands out there, so um, just do your research on that. The next pad that you want to use after you finish compound the surface is the polishing pad. This is the pad that's going to bring out a nice deep shine eventually. It's a little bit softer than the cutting pad, but not as soft as the detail pad. And that's going to move all the swirls, the heavy swirls. It's also going to bring out that shine and give you a deep look. You want to combine this with a polishing compound or a polishing liquid. Uh, in this case, this is the Meguiar's. It says ultimate polish on here, but any polishing uh, fluid or liquid should do the trick. Uh, once you get done with the polishing pad and the, comp and the polishing liquid, or the polishing wax, there's different names for them. You wanna go ahead to your detail pad. And this one is a foam pad. This is my first, or this is actually my second time using it. I, there's a little bit of, uh, I guess, discoloration on here because I used this initially, but I don't really have a good feel for this pad yet. 3M makes really great products. They didn't sponsor this by any means, but uh, you wanna have a finishing pad. This pad is really soft. And after all your polishing, this pad will remove even the slightest swirls, and you want to also use a wax to actually protect the surface. So not only does it give you a nice, smooth, buttery surface, you also protect the, the surface with a wax as well. And you have different kinds of wax. This one is a, a quick wax from Meguiar's as well, and um, it works pretty well. So I'll be going in this process from left to right, and uh, hopefully that works out. Let's get to the car and get started here and see if this actually works. All right guys, we are ready to start buffing and polishing. The first thing I'm gonna do here is use my painter's tape and mark off a certain area. And I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. First reason is to separate where I've worked from where I haven't touched. It's really good to know your progress while you're doing this. And from my experience, once you don't tape off an area, you can't really tell if you've made good progress here or if this size needs more work or if this size needs less work or this size needs more work. You can't differentiate which side or the difference because you're almost like blending the, uh, the actual quality of your work. So you can do this one to standards. I'm gonna mark it off right here as well. I can see my progress. And then once I'm satisfied with that, I'll remove the tape. But once I work on the other side, the other sections, I know when to continue or when to stop so I know that these two are similar performance or similar quality of work. That's the reason for masking that off. So now that it's masked off, I have my DA polisher. What it looks like, it's relatively heavy, but it's okay. I have my 
pad here, my compound pad, and there's some little Velcro here. There's also some Velcro on this side as well. The loops are on this side. And you just wanna center it as much as possible on your pad. So I'm gonna look straight down and see where the center is. And for me, right there, that's good enough. All right, another thing, a little tip here, besides the tape, is if you, do, if you are gonna use a DA sander or a rotary tool, the manufacturers did a good job making this looks pretty nice. You see a lot of professionals, including myself, I have a little line here. I took a little magic marker or marker or a pen and just put a little line right here. And the reason for that is that this thing spins pretty fast, depending on your speed. And you don't want to burn the clear coat or your paint if you're sanding or whatever. You just don't want to burn through it too fast. And high speed can increase the friction and create a lot of heat and you can easily burn through your clear coat or your paint. So what this does is as this is spinning, I can actually monitor how fast this is turning based upon the index mark that I have right here. If this mark wasn't here, I couldn't tell how fast I'm going. I couldn't tell how hard I'm pressing, if it's spinning faster or slower, or if it's spinning really fast and I'm doing damage to the actual surface. So it gives me a good index to know how consistently this thing is spinning and rotating. So that's a tip right there. Before I start as well, another tip is as I'm doing this, you see that my cord is right here. That's not really good. It gets in the way. It might scratch the paint. It might even dent your surface. So a pro tip here is to put this over your shoulder right here. So now it's not touching the car. I can move forward and back and this cord is not in the way. Okay, so I'm going to apply this compound onto the pad. Uh, some guys also apply it to the surface. It gets really messy. Uh, so you want to shake this for a couple of minutes to get the ingredients going. Okay, so we have all the ingredients here mixed. I'm going to put a dab on here in the center and then put one top down left and right. So 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 and 9 and one in the center. So here we go. Put one here in the Oh, that's a lot. Put one at 12, one at 6. And as you can see, it gets pretty messy. All right, so I have my marks on there. Do not, I repeat, do not start this uh, rotary tool or DA polisher with this right here. It's gonna go everywhere. Gonna have a big mess. So what you wanna do is dab certain areas where, of where you're gonna polish. So I'm gonna polish there, polish here. All right there, so you have it on the pad and on the surface. Similar here, you wanna start off at a low speed. This is a variable speed dual action polisher. So you have one through I think six. I'm gonna start at level two. It's pretty noisy and it vibrates pretty heavily, um, but you can see the rotation. I'll show you right now. So it orbits and spins at the same time, which is pretty good. And if this was still pretty moist and wet, it would be everywhere. All right, so let's start this. Um, as far as pattern, uh, this is a very small surface right here. As I get to the back, I'll talk a little bit about the, my pattern. But initially, if you're gonna do uh, any kind of buffing or polishing, you wanna go vertical and horizontal. So it's a good idea to go uh, horizontal, 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 then vertical, vertical, vertical along your panel. Very small space, not much space for vertical, but I'll try it. Let's start at level two, get the compound all over the surface, and then we'll speed it up. Keep it down, put it on. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna increase the speed to three, and it might be difficult to get at the corners right here, so eventually I might have to remove the center a little bit back to get to the actual edges of the surface. That's gonna be a really good idea. So let's turn it up to level three. It's a little bit faster, a little bit more torque from the motors, um, so we can see the actual pad spin and rotate.
right, not bad. Looks pretty good already, actually. Um, I still have to do back here, so let's keep that going. You can see how dirty that is. That might be a combination of uh, the, the soot and stuff off the clear coat, but it could also be this trim right here. So I don't want to get the pad too dirty before I get to some other areas. So I'll work in this area right here, get that going, and then uh, probably remove the tape and start another section. All right, that's good for now. I'm gonna get my microfiber cloth and wipe it down and see what it looks like. I might need more than two, but here's my two new ones for now. And remove some of that compound and see what it looks like. All right, so if you don't have a DA polisher or a rotary tool to uh, apply this compound. This is the process how you'd be doing it. You'd put some compound on here and just get to it with the elbow grease. Um, all right, this doesn't look too bad. There's still some swirls in there. Um, the sandpaper did do a lot of damage. Um, this is the process here. Uh, we'll keep going at it. I'm thinking I might want to remove or push back the center for a little bit more. So I think I'll do that quickly get the cinema open and then just go at it right here close to the edge. But I can see a lot darker clear coat than this side. So there you go, good comparison. And it should get better as we, you know, keep going at it. All right, let's do it again. Sunroof is now open. My pad is still pretty wet, wet enough, moist enough. Let's see if we can do a little horizontal action here. Right, it's looking pretty good. Still some really small scratches on there, but it's smooth. <laughs> you can actually hear it. That's the original clear coat, although that's pretty rough. That's the new one. And that's just the cutting pad. So let's get to the polishing pad. And wow, this wet sand does do a good job. I can actually see the difference in where I wet sand and where I didn't get the wet sand. So don't want to go too crazy with it and get the uh, pad all clogged up. But. All right, I think this is good enough for now. So as you can see, all that oxidation, all the scratches from the sanding is pretty much gone. 
If you look at the right angle, you can still see a lot of scratches from the sandpaper, but <clears throat> I'm hoping the polish can get it out. So this side is good. I am going to continue to the rear and, uh, and get this section here done. So I guess it's time to maybe close the sunroof and get over there. Okay, we're ready to begin the back part. And same principle, I'm going to remove the tape here so I can see where I've been before and where I haven't been. It needs a little, a little bit more love in this area here, but I'll do that. Shake the bottle since this area is really dry. No real lubrication on there yet. Don't want to overdo it as yet. And uh, let's go. All right, I forgot one thing. I forgot to put my tape down, which is important. Know when to stop and when to... My tape. That's where I want to put it. Looks okay. Looks good. I'm gonna put some more compound on here to get to this section, but it's turning out pretty good. Okay guys, this is by no means a final verdict or determination, but this is just the first pass. This is the first pass uh, with the compound, so you can get a good idea of what it looks like. And that is with the wet sanding before and after. Not too shabby. It does require a lot of patience, that's for sure. Okay, let's go to the other side. All right, let's see here. Okay, so here, the pad isn't, it's actually kind of dry actually, so we don't get it wet too much. Oops, that's a little bit too much there. So what I'm going to do is just dab it, remove my tape. I can see the difference. And now, because I taped it off, I have to get this side at least close enough to this performance right here or this outcome or better. And that's your point of taping your area. I'm going to also put a tape right here so I know where to stop. I'm not going to start the rotary or the DA polisher with that much on it. So here we go.
that turned out really, really good. <laughs> crazy. All right, I'm gonna close the sunroof and then head on to the back. But for now, it looks okay. All right. There we go. All right. Remove this tape. All right, let's continue. All right, still pretty cool. Didn't overheat, thank goodness. Sometimes these pads can overheat. All right, that was cool. All right, all right, so, so far so good. Uh, as far as at least getting that hazy look off the car, um, that's a really good start. And that was only with the compound and the actual, the foam cutting pad. So, uh, let's see, cuts fast, okay, so just, color and clarity restore that's what it's supposed to do it did bring the color back from the hazy look um, and once we get to the polish that should do some really good look to make it pop and get hopefully most of the swirls out I'm gonna do here is use my painter's tape here if I can find it. First thing I'm gonna do here is use my painter's tip. First thing I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do here is use my painter's tape. 